Bridgewater has hosted the ODAC Outdoor Track and Field Championships twice in the past six years, with the BC women placing second both times. While the 2015 squad placed second to Roanoke on the Jobson track, that year's team claimed both the cross-country and indoor conference titles, and featured three future All-Americans on the roster. And we'll turn our attention to the final heat. About to go off, Washington and Lee's Allison Peacock in lane two, and then going across, it's Janelle Elliott from Roanoke, EMU's Macora Nagaway, Melanie Meadows from Roanoke, Tabitha Stone from Randolph, Bridgewater's Amber Sellen, and Diana Young from Randolph. Four freshmen out of seven in this heat. Sellen pushing down three other athletes out in front. Sellen takes it for Bridgewater. Second heat, seven competitors. Shannon Doe's Brooke Hargreaves in lane two. Randolph's Blanca Sanchez in lane three. Lynchburg's Alicia Washington in lane four. Bridgewater's Amber Sellen in lane five. Washington Lee's Dana Lee in lane six. Guilford's Alexis Newkirk in lane seven. And Lynchburg's Fredonia Johnson in lane eight. See how far up Washington moves up in this event from her seed time. Also get to see Amber Sellen, the freshman. Sellen's time in the 100 dash prelims was the top ODAC time of the year. So a couple athletes who improved quite a bit from their seed time in the 100 are both in this heat of the 200. And they're off Sellen already looking good. But so is Washington. It's those two. It's Sellen ahead. Washington in second. Followed by Washington and Lee's Lee. Sellen inching ahead. Still neck and neck. Sellen still about a body length in front. And Sellen takes the heat. Right behind her is Washington. And Lee in third. Amber Sellen's time 25.71. Alicia Washington. Second in the heat in 25.95. Lee, 26.11 for third. So on the women's side of the meet, we ended up finishing second at the 2015 Outdoor ODAC Championships. The women had been having a pretty good year, and uh, the cross-country team had won their uh, second straight conference title back in the fall. We had won our second straight indoor conference title. Uh, in the winter, so the women were, were in a pretty good place and we knew would be competitive for the outdoor title. We knew we were going to be a little thin as there's an addition of some throwing events and distance events that occur in the spring, and so we weren't really sure if, if we were going to hold up against Roanoke, and Roanoke ended up uh, getting the win that day and, and putting a squash on the girls' triple crown hopes. But uh, win five out of six titles, you know, across the men's and women's championships for the 2014-15 the season was still a pretty big accomplishment for our program and, and for, the, for the college here. So it was a good weekend. We had some very competitive performances across the board, um, despite some key injuries and some things like that that we were also dealing with on the women's side. First handoff. I think everyone got through cleanly there. Coming to the second handoff zone. And again, everyone through. Final handoff, it is Roanoke. Well ahead. Roanoke followed by Virginia Wesleyan. But Roanoke will win easily. Virginia Wesleyan in, in second, Washington and Lee in third. Running in this heat will be Bridgewater's Aaron Parker, Virginia Wesleyan's Emily Latimer, Bridgewater's Emily Young, Washington and Lee's Rachel Steffen, Bridgewater's Maria Christ, EMU's Catherine Lehman, Virginia Wesleyan's Marissa Coombs, EMU's Hannah Chapeldick, Washington and Lee's Liliana Arnold, Shenandoah's Shelby Schrader, Roanoke's Claire Brooks, and Bridgewater's Elizabeth Stump. So watch out for EMU in this heat. We saw Catherine Lehman winning the 10K last night. Hannah Chapel Dick along with Lehman, the two EMU runners, two of the best distance runners in the region. And 
Bridgewater with several contenders in this race as well. The defending champion is Chapel Dick from EMU. She won last year in 432.54. She's an All-American in indoor this year. And she's the top seed this year. Correction, her winning time last year, 438.6. That time of 432 is her best time in the spring of 2015. And there is the gun. in the fast heat of the women's 1500 meters. Bridgewater looking for points with four runners here. EMU probably featuring the two favorites. The distance races proved to be pretty fruitful for us over the course of the weekend as well. Liz Stump uh, ended up leading the way for us in those events. She had a great double in the 800 and the 1500 finishing second in both of those events. The women's 5K runners scored in a couple of places for us uh, with Kenzie McDonald leading the way there for us as well. Liz ended up having a really good season uh, after ODAX. She ended up qualifying for the NCAA championships that spring in the 800 and making a trip to nationals and, and getting to compete there to, to wrap up her career here at Bridgewater. Coombs or Latimer, I think it's... Emily Latimer. Coming around the first 400 and the lead pack will go through in about a little over 70 seconds. The clock was actually off. Looked like again just like the men's, a slow first lap as they wait to see who makes the first move. Still the entire field all together. And Stump in third here. Chapel Dick sitting behind her, Layman moving to the outside. Still all 12 runners right there together. They come through with 800 meters to go. Get around to the back stretch, we'll see the 800 split. And the leaders go through 800 to go at about 245. So still, pretty deliberate pace. Chapel Dick has moved in front. Lehman still just sitting on the outside. Saw her last night in the 10K, the kick she had. A little more elbowing going on in that lead pack. As they come back into the stretch, about to hit the bell lap. It's Chapel Dick leading the way. Layman on the outside, still stump from Bridgewater in second. Another eagle moving up as well. And now Layman coming from the outside. Stump trying to hold her off. Stump is able to get position. There is the bell. Four athletes starting to pull away now. Five, there's two Bridgewater runners in there. Virginia Wesleyan competitor as well. Chapel Dick kicking. Layman has not made her move yet. Chapel Dick and Stump down the back stretch. See what Layman has left after winning the 10K last night. Stump still right there with the All-American. Hannah Chapel Dick from EMU and now Stump. Nearly trying to make a move to get around her. Chapel Dick fights it off. It's those two pulling away. 
Stump has blazed this final 400. Stuck right there on Chapel Dick. Here they come into the final 100 meters. Both athletes kicking. I think Chapel Dick will hold her off, but she had to work for it. The entire last 500, really. There's Chapel Dick coming through to win at about 447. Stump two seconds behind her. Virginia Wesleyan in third, and then Lehman in fourth. Bridgewater picking up more points there in fifth. A couple athletes losing their hip numbers, so not sure all of the names. So EMU with first and fourth place, but great race from Stump, who challenged the defending champion Chapel Dick the entire way. We're about to start in the women's 100 meter final. Our eight finalists, Shakira Mills from Virginia Wesleyan in lane one, Melanie Meadows from Roanoke in lane two, Esther Prempe from Roanoke in lane three, Bridgewater's Amber Sellen in lane four, Alicia Washington from Lynchburg in lane five, Randolph's Diana Young in lane six, Washington and Lee's Dana Lee in lane seven, and Lynchburg's Lacey Elliott in lane eight. They're off early lead for Washington from Lynchburg. See if Washington can hold off the field. It's going to be close. I think Alicia Washington from Lynchburg who's the defending champion, might have held them off, but might have been a photo finish between a number of athletes there. The women's team scoring through the 1500, Bridgewater had opened up a lead with 73 points to Roanoke's 58. However, keep in mind, Roanoke making up big points in those last few sprinting events, so that gap will probably be gone. Melman going through the first 400. We'll get the split. It's 73 seconds. Rest of the field back behind the two leaders. Melman out all alone in front right now. Followed by Cobb. Still Melman and then Cobb. Found the back stretch now. Emily Melman looking good for the Eagles. Now it has 200 meters to go. And a lead of probably close to 30 meters on Cobb. Melman around the turn. Melman into the final stretch. And here comes Melman down the stretch. We'll see the time. 2.20 right now on the clock. Melman driving in. Melman will finish at 2.27, 2.28. And about 2.31 there for Cobb in second. Chapel Dick is the defending champion. In this event, she won in 218.31 at Odax last year. She's already won, run 211 in the spring of 2015. And runners to the line. And they're off in the top heat of the women's 800. The athletes cut in. Looks like Washington and Lee's Fonviel setting the early pace. Bridgewater with three of the top five at the moment. Fonviel still leading. And now Hannah Chapel Dick moving to her outside shoulder, followed by a couple of Bridgewater runners. One of them is definitely Stump. See Parker back 
in sixth place. Here they come. Chapel Dick leading the way. Eagles running in second and third place and sixth at the moment. Virginia Wesleyan's Marissa Coombs is the other person out in that lead pack. She's in fifth. Now Chapel Dick leading two Eagles. The other Bridgewater runner out in front is Maria Chapel Dick down the stretch, followed by two Eagles. Chapel Dick will win in about 2.13 by Hover and Stump. Fourth place goes to Coombs from Virginia Wesleyan, fifth to Fonviel, and then Bridgewater's Aaron Parker getting sixth. So the Eagles go 2 3 6. They do pick up some points. Here in the 800 meters. Getting ready now for the women's 200 meter final. The finalists in lane one Dana Lee from Washington and Lee. Lynchburg's Alicia Washington in lane two. Bridgewater's Amber Sellen in lane three. Roanoke's Alexis Janney and Elise Kinney in lanes four and five. Those were the top two seeds in prelims. Virginia Wesleyan's Tiffany Lennon in lane six. Randolph's Diana Young in lane seven and Lynchburg's Lacey Elliott in lane eight. We're down to our last few events, really. After this, we'll have the 5Ks starting at 420, men's first and then women's, and then just the 4x4, and that'll be it for our live coverage. Remember to check afterwards on BridgewaterEagles.com or ODAConline.com to get the final results, final team standings, and the award winners. Award winners will be announced after a coach's meeting, tentatively, Awards scheduled for 6.15, although could always run a bit later. Now the runners in their blocks. And there is the gun. Bridgewater's hopes in this event, resting on Amber Sellen in lane three. Roanoke has the top two seeds, Janney in lane four, Kinney in lane five. It is Janney and Kinney coming down in front. And those two with a big lead now, Alicia Washington in third. But it looks like it will be Alexis Janney and her teammate Elise Kinney from Roanoke going one, two. Another important event for the Maroon women their quest to defend as ODAC champions. On the sprint side of things, it uh, was a little bit of a struggle for us that weekend, and, and I think that was one of the areas where we had hoped to perform a little bit better to, to get us closer to winning the title. Um, this was back when Amber Sellen, who ended up being a, a standout for us, was a freshman, and uh, she battled through that meet after a pretty successful indoor championship. She ended up uh, third in the 100, and uh, ended up eighth in the 200 after finishing third in the prelims of the 200 the day before. So um, she got some good experience and I think learned some lessons in that meet. Um, certainly, you know, came back her sophomore year during that campaign was all American, both indoors and outdoors um, in, in the 60 and then in the uh, 100. And then uh, junior year was the big campaign that she had where she ended up winning three national titles, uh, was All-American in the long jump, uh, both indoor and outdoor as well, and, uh, and capped off her senior year with, with another All-American honor during the indoor season. Um, I think she got up to 11 by the time she got out of here. She's certainly probably the most decorated athlete we've, we've had in the track program here at Bridgewater and one of the most decorated athletes we've, we've had in college history. So. like we have team standings through the 400 hurdles for the women's and through the 200 for the men's. Through the 400, no, I guess we know no team standings on the women's through the 400 hurdles listed there. I'm trying to get an update on that from the results. Field goes through the first 400.
This is the second to last event on the track. After this, we'll just have the 4x4, men's and then women's. And that'll wrap up our live coverage. Again, check online, either BridgewaterEagles.com or ODAKonline.com a little later this afternoon to get the full results and the award winners, which will be announced after a coaches meeting following the 4x4. Eleven laps to go now. Still a big pack going through first 800. See Lehman there on the outside as she's done throughout the weekend. It's Lehman going out ahead now. And Bridgewater is Mackenzie McDonald in second. Pat in from EMU is on the inside there, right next to McDonald. Ten laps to go now. Lehman's seed time over 91 seconds faster than anyone else in the field and she starts to pull away here. Finishing her third lap, followed by a pack of, it looks like, five runners with two more right behind them. Get the splits for the first mile next time they come around. So the field event group really did a great job for us on the women's side over the course of the weekend and lent a lot of points to us. Our standout performance came from Caitlin Sanger, who was a sophomore at the time. She ended up winning the discus and setting a new school record. She would go on to finish her career pretty strong two years later and uh, earn an All-American in the discus at the Outdoor Championships in 2017, where she finished fourth and broke the school record again that year as well. We had great support from our pole vaulters uh, in the field events. We ended up with uh, three finishers there that scored points for us. Aaron Parker led the way, I think, with a fourth place finish. And then uh, Kristen Trice, who actually had been battling a pretty bad ankle injury from earlier in the spring, was able to compete in one event. She triple jumped for us uh, that weekend and, and ended up third. Certainly not the performance she was looking for, but uh, you know she came back the next season, had a great spring, winner as well, um, broke conference records, broke school record, and ended up leaving Bridgewater in 2016 with an All-American performance in the triple jump at, at the Just Outdoor Championships. That next pack that includes McIntosh and Lutke, now going through the mile in about 6.07. Lehman, about two miles to go. Her teammate Patton in second. Lutke from Bridgewater in third. 
then Kerry Dalton from Roanoke, and Mackenzie McDonald from Bridgewater. Liz Wade from Virginia Wesleyan is in there in seventh place behind her sandwich between two WNL runners. Here is Lehman again on the home stretch. Over on the back stretch, Patton going through two miles at about 12.18. I think Lutke from Bridgewater, just a second or two behind her. Lehman's into her final mile. So with four laps to go, let's see the order of the next pack of runners as Lehman has blown the rest of the field away. It is still EMU's Patton in second. Zanny Lucky from Bridgewater is in third. Liz Wade from Virginia Wesleyan has moved up. She's now in fourth. And then Mackenzie McDonald in fifth for Bridgewater. Sixth place, Kerry Dalton from Roanoke. Rachel Solomon from WNL is back there. Again, Deloja from Bridgewater as well. But those were the top six, I believe, that we read to you, starting to spread out around the track. Here is Lehman again. Continues to lap runner. She'll have three to go when she comes around. And that next group of five spread out along the back stretch right now, still led by Patton and Ned Ludke. Liz Wade still sticking close to Ludke. Layman's less than three laps to go now. Layman will lap almost everybody by the time this is over. She'll lap at least everyone but the top six. The rest of the field is on the home stretch as you continue to watch Lehman down the back. Tell you who comes across the line here. Patton has three laps to go. Liz Wade has moved into third ahead of Lutke. And then Mackenzie McDonald from Bridgewater as well. And Dalton from Roanoke. is into her second to last lap. Again, we'll see the rest of the current scorers are now back on the home stretch over 200 meters behind Lehman. Here is Jolie Patton from EMU. She has two laps to go. Following her will be Liz Wade. She's coming across with two to go. And then a couple of Bridgewater runners. You see Zanny Lutke with 800 to go, followed closely by Mackenzie McDonald. And then rounding out the top six here is Kerry Dalton from Roanoke. I believe next up now is Lindsay Deloja from Bridgewater. And hard to keep track of who is where at this point. Lehman coming around with her final lap. She's lapped everyone but the top seven. Again, may pick off one or two more on this lap. Here is Lehman in the final lap. 
going to win the 5,000 meters going away. She's about to pass Bridgewater's Delosier. And there she goes down the back stretch, passing Delosier. Next up will be sixth place runner Carrie Dalton from Roanoke. Two hundred meters to go now for Lehman. The rest of the leaders, including Patton, are just now coming on the home stretch with a lap to go. Lehman coming into the final hundred, and she's lapped everyone but the next five runners. Here is Lehman. We'll see the time as she comes across. She will win in 1803. Catherine Lehman from EMU winning easily. Jolie Patton from EMU. She's in second about 200 meters to go and she's put quite a gap on the rest of the field it's Liz Wade from Virginia Wesleyan next here is Patton kicking it into the final 100 so EMU will go 1-2 and 5k they've done so in a couple distance races Here is Patton. She'll finish just over 19 minutes. Looks like about 19.02. Now we'll see the rest of the leaders. Liz Wade coming across. Liz Wade in about 19.13. Followed by Zanny Lutke. 19.18. It looks like McDonald dropped off a little. Kerry Dalton from Roanoke finishing down fifth. She kicked past McDonald on the last lap. McDonald now coming across to get the final point in about 1936. And it was another Bridgewater runner, and I think Delosier. I think that is Delosier coming in next in seventh. For our final event of the weekend, thanks for watching with us over the last two days. We'll wrap it up with the women's 4x4. Bridgewater winning the men's 4x4 and winning the ODAC team title just a few moments ago. They had that clinched going in. It does appear that the Roanoke women have locked up the team title. That would be their 11th outdoor championship overall, their fourth in a row. Shenandoah will be running in lane one, Eastern Mennonite in lane two, Washington and Lee in lane three, Roanoke in lane four, Virginia Wesleyan in lane five, Bridgewater in lane six, Guilford in lane seven, and Lynchburg in lane eight. Roanoke with the top seeded time by quite a gap, 350.8. It's the top seed by 12 seconds in this event. They come first leg coming into the home stretch. It's Roanoke and Virginia Wesleyan right there together. Roanoke with a bit of a lead. Bridgewater currently in the mix for third place, although EMU and Washington and Lee probably ahead of them as well by the time we get to the turn. Well under a minute for that first lap. And we'll see the gaps as they cut in. It will be Roanoke in first. Virginia Wesley in second. Looks like Bridgewater back in fifth. And they cut in on the backstretch. Roanoke already with a gap. Virginia Wesley in second. EMU in third. Washington and Lee in fourth. Bridgewater in fifth. Those five teams pulling well ahead of the rest of the field.
back around. Here comes Roanoke. I believe that's Hannah Chapeldick for EMU who's made up a gap and pushed Royals into second. We're about dead even with Virginia Wesleyan in any case. There's the handoff for W and LA and the handoff for Bridgewater in fifth place. Roanoke trying to do the same as the Bridgewater men and cap off their team championship with a win in the 4x4. Losing a little ground to EMU and Virginia Wesleyan. The Roanoke still in front on the third leg. Washington and Lee also pulling closer to that lead group. Coming back around in the home stretch, Roanoke, a lead of about 10 meters. Virginia Wesleyan surging back ahead of EMU. WNL close as well in fourth place. Roanoke takes the handoff, about 257 heading into the last lap. And now Bridgewater coming through about 306. Heading into the back stretch, it's Roanoke and Virginia Wesleyan. Now Washington and Lee past EMU into third. Roanoke still with a small lead over Virginia Wesleyan. 150 to go. See if they hold them off. Here they come for the final time into the home stretch. And it looks like it will be Roanoke. Roanoke 50 meters to go. The 2015 ODAC women's champions and your champions in the 4x4 is Roanoke and about 354. Virginia Wesleyan now crossing four seconds behind them. There's Washington and Lee in about four minutes flat and then EMU and now Bridgewater across the line. Now coming across will be Shenandoah, Lynchburg and Guilford. The final three teams here in the 4x4. So again, that will wrap up our live coverage of the 2015 ODAC Outdoor Track and Field Championships. Congratulations to the Roanoke women and the Bridgewater men on their team championships. Check online, bridgewatereagles.com or odaconline.com in a little bit for full results and awards following the coaches' meeting. And thanks for watching with us here on BoxCast and bridgewatereagles.com.